Okay, this is sort of a in situ uh, roaming around the shop uh, shot. Um, uh, the shop's kind of in a little bit of a disarray at the moment. Uh, so this video right here is about this bar feeder. This is a Hardinge air-operated bar feeder. And the way this works is you stick it in the back end of the draw tube here and then you tighten up these screws or actually you spread them back out and what it does is it it crimps that o-ring that's inside there's a couple o-rings this just causes the sleeves to push together and it clamps on the o-ring and the bar feeder stays stuck in the draw tube of the 5c call it closer so, you know, you've got your collet right here. It doesn't have anything fixed to it. Now, there's this control box here. Let me bring it into some better light. So, this is a Hardinge HF1A spindle bar feed. And what it has in this box, this is just uh, basically an air pressure regulator. And then this is a feed and retract. So what it has in the back here is this little gizmo uh, is part of a Venturi vacuum generator. And you can see here it's 0 to 30 uh, inches of vacuum up to 60 PSI. And this allows you to control whether or not you're feeding or you're retracting. Um, in this case, you know, the retract is you know, kind of a, it's kind of a neat feature, but it's not really necessary because in practice, the way that this bar feed works is, um, let's just assume for a second that this is actually uh, a bar that I want to put back in there. In this, you know, on this lathe here, uh, you know, there's a, a good reason for having the retractor, or, you know, because you've got a big turret in the way. But if you have a gang tool lathe where you can clear a spot to feed a bar back in, then yeah, you, know, you can do that. Uh, the other side of it is you just, you know, what you end up doing is you retract the piston all the way and then you pull the piston out with a pair of needle nose pliers, shove a bar in here, throw the piston back in, and then cap it on the end. So this is the little guy. This is for a 5C collet, uh, which has a, you know, 5C is up to inch and an eighth, but this bar right here, uh, this is like, I think, uh, up to three quarters is really what it's intended for. So imagine this concept, but supersize it. And what you have is this bar feed. I made this for my hardened CHNC one. And what it is, is it's just a bigger version of that little bar feed. And I actually use the same controller. I've got a push lock fit in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this all apart and I'm gonna show you just how simple this bar feed really is and how you can make one yourself. Okay, back again. So what we have here is it's about a 42 inch or uh, I think what I did is I bought a four foot long piece of DOM tubing and I I used well this is I think eh, let's just grab a caliper and I'll tell you the dimensions now this is designed to fit a 16 C collet uh, the OD on this is inch and three quarter and the length is it's well, 48 inches long so I used a four foot long piece of DOM uh, inch and three quarter and it looks like it's a uh, 090 wall we'll see what the inside diameter is okay so the inside diameter is uh, well, that says 1552 let's go to this end Okay, so 
1.55 is the ID on this. And basically, this ID is nothing more than, you know, it, it was just polished with some, uh, you know, emery cloth uh, put on a, a tube and spun real fast. So this diameter right here is the inside diameter of the drawbar on my, uh, you know, air drawbar on the, the hard hinge. Uh, it stops right here, and this knurled area right here, there's actually, um, the housing extends, or the, the enclosure for the lathe is about right here. There's a door, and there's a big hole where you'd put a, you know, full-size 12-foot bar feeder. What I did is I just made a block that sandwiched in that hole and had a bearing, and I knurled this to fit the inside of the bearing because it was a metric bearing and yada, yada, yada. So this right here actually rides inside of a bearing in the housing and it keeps this whole thing from, you know, whipping around uh, with so much, you know, length out the back end of the spindle. And so I can slam a three foot bar in here and I can, you know, put up to like an inch and a half diameter three foot bar. So before we get to the, the union end of things that's uh, a little more complicated, let's get the piston out of there. I'll show you the piston. And this one, yeah, I tried to get clever with it, but you don't have to really get clever. Okay, so I have this, uh, this turned down real low. And all I'm going to do... <laughs> oh, I'm so smart sometimes. Yeah. Okay. And that's exactly what the bar feed does. But in that case it would actually hit the back of a collet. So this is actually the driving piston that I made. All it is is a piece of Delrin with a cone cut into it. It's just got a 40, you know, it's got a, like a 45 degree inverted cone or, you know, 90 degree included angle. And I tried to get kind of clever with it. Uh, what I did was I took a piece of quarter inch rod and put a spring underneath the piston head. I made a little board hole that's about half inch diameter and then I put some ports here to relieve the air behind it so it didn't, uh, you know, so that this could move freely. But basically what happens is, is if you have a small diameter bar in here or you've got a bar that's got a, you know, inverted point on it, then what you can do is uh, whenever this part right here hits the back of the collet, if the collet is, you know, say a half inch diameter, what this will do is this will drive that extra, you know, two or three inches of bar uh, up through the middle of the collet. So you're not, you know, wasting a big long, long length of bar. So this is something that I've never seen in anything before. Just something I kind of, you know, came up with out of, uh, you know, the back of my head. And I really... Honestly, I think that it's probably not that terribly useful, so I wouldn't do it again. What we have here is it's a rotary union and it's the end cap. I threaded the inside of the tube uh, to, you know, in this case, you know, because it was like 1.558, I probably just made up a thread and I cut both threads on the lathe. I just picked something like, you know, 16 threads per inch or 18 threads per inch. And whatever I could do for thread depth, uh, you know, I did. So, you know, I looked at machinery handbook and, you know, just kind of made it up. What this is, is this just a, it's just a piece of stainless. Uh, and then these are called quad seals. They're like O-rings, but they have, uh, they're square shaped and they actually have uh, four sealing edges. And quad seals are what are used typically in you know, uh, air pistons, like Hardinge uses them, you know, all over the place inside the turret and uh, other parts in a Hardinge lathe, um, the CHNC. So what I did was I took a Parker fitting right here, I turned that off, uh, and then I drilled and tapped it uh, to fit this. This looks like a, f actually, this is a 5 sixteenths bolt that I drilled down the center. And because these are skateboard bearings, uh, they're 8 millimeter which is close enough to 5 sixteenths that it works. Let me grab a, a snap ring plier real quick. And 
Okay, so this is actually pretty straightforward. I just have a small snap ring on the front and the back uh, to keep it centered in there. Yeah, I took this out last night and it was cooperating just fine. But, yeah. Let's try it around this way and see. Uh, these are... Okay, there we go. Snap ring out. Need a little love to get this thing out. So, all I did was... You'll see in a second. Tap that. And then... Okay. So this is a 5 16 bolt. Uh, actually, it looks like it's probably 3 8 thereabouts. There is another snap ring groove, or another groove in there, with a quad seal. And then that just rides inside of a polished bore. And that's where the rotary union seal comes from. It's nothing exotic. It'll probably wear out, but you know, as much as I used this bar feed, I didn't have any problem. So it's just a bore right there, a bore right there, a couple skateboard bearings, and then, you know, none of these are critical dimensions. It's just kind of like, you know, you kind of bodge it together and make it fit. And so this just goes through the bearing, you know, it assembles like this. I push it through by hand, so that's not really a very tight fit. And uh, I put this snap ring back on there. That snap ring is pretty well blasted. Okay, that'll work. So, and it spins, you know, it's a little tight. It's not as free spinning as the hardened one, but, you know, it's a redneck rotary union. Um, so, really, this bar feed is three pieces. Uh, it's just a tube. You know, it's a DOM tube that's got a, you know, uh, sandpaper polished ID. It's a pusher uh, that's made out of Delrin. I used Delrin because... Uh, you know, it was easy to machine, and uh, it's kind of self-lubricating in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, it's just easy to work with. Um, and putting the cone there, it means that it's not harder than any of the metal that's going to go in this. So, uh, there's that part, that part, and let me show you this the whole magic of how this thing works and goes together. And why... It's so simple. So all you do, this thing goes in the back of the spindle and it screws into the back of the collet. Because, you know, 5C, 16C collets, they all have internal threads for a stop in the back of a collet. So I just use the collet stop threads to hold this in. It screws in like that. And then the pusher goes in the end right here. And then the cap goes on that. And you don't really need that second ring right here. That's just kind of I think I just did that to keep the, the cap uh, from unscrewing and you know, keep it snug. And then uh, if you take this, okay, and that's that.